Welcome, folks. Mac T back. Yes, after a hiatus during the Labor Day holiday, uh, did not cover anything. Took a little vacation, went out camping, enjoying the fresh air, and it was a great time. And I hope you all had a great time too while you're out and about. Been a little slow on the videos here on the YT, and of course, uh, trying to catch up. I do have some that I have stockpiled and been working on and a few projects that I have to do in the future so uh, the videos will be coming out and hopefully I can find some new and better stuff for you all to watch and uh, cover some repairs but as with all things we want to take and cover you know some of the met new members uh, sorry if I missed you uh, but you know hey the holiday was here and there's a lot of new folks uh, so I'm going to cover basically from September 1st on and what we do have we have Corey we have Anthony Wayne Derek Benjamin Keith Allison Michael uh, Manol uh, Deanna let's see Ju Jody James Bob Jim Marcelo Shane Sadir Barry Eric Gary David Nicole, Mansour, Ronnie, Thomas, uh, Stephen, Jordan, uh, Ogrework, uh, Charles, Tony, David, uh, Lane, Lauren, Kevin, uh, Bong, Alex, Anton, John, Tom, and Ken. I think they just joined here uh, as Tom just joined under the wire. So we have everybody here that uh, has joined recently. And of course the group is nearing that 1500 member mark and it's getting hard to remember all of you. I'm getting older or something. I don't know, but uh, I tell you what, I am impressed. Everything, everybody learns, they share right away. And then we get the questions answered almost instantaneously. Oh, no, Michael, I am not tired. I don't look tired, do I? <laughs> old and tired. Leave the old dog sleep on the porch, right? Anyway, uh, I did. Speaking of Michael, since he's commenting, I did give him a call. I like to give random calls on occasions via the uh, Facebook app messenger so if you see me ringing you I'm just checking to say hi see how your edge is doing and maybe answer a few questions on your edge personally there uh, to help you out so uh, I did make a few other phone calls for some uh, Florida folks uh, didn't get an answer I guess they're busy getting ready for the hurricane and I do want to wish everyone a very safe time while this hurricane is going through. I truly do not want anybody hurt or anything like that. So hopefully you either evacuated or in a safe place. And our thoughts and prayers are with you on that. And speaking of thoughts and prayers, I uh, do have one shout out I want to give to a very close family friend, uh, Miss Chin. Uh, she is undergoing some very serious uh, health issues right now and we are all very very worried about her and her uh, health so uh, you know I just want to give her a shout out because she is a dear lady a mentor and a pillar of the community and and we just uh, want her to be all right so um, that's my shout out to you Chin so hopefully you see this from your house and uh, get your spirits lifted up yes we want you to get better but that being said uh, we do have a lot of different stuff that's going on here and I know I put a teaser out on what I did to Lou now I I decided to do something to Lou you guys are guessing tunes uh, blueprinting the engine uh, nothing as extravagant as that folks uh, Lou's got 208,000 miles on her it's, it's and I've discovered something else worrisome about her uh, but uh, as far as uh, Lou's going, everything is, seems to be going, running good. So whatever it is, it, uh, my concerns, I will reveal later uh, if it's a major ordeal. But right now, it's not a major deal. I will let it ride and see what materializes later. Uh, but it is not going to be a cheap fix if it is a, is a need. So, uh, yeah, maybe even a heart transplant. So... 
we'll see what happens. Uh, running good, so we'll just carry on smartly. But uh, you did see me, uh, I let her out to pasture there and let her run a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to confirm nor deny that that video was me uh, and, and Lou running hard. Uh, just drive safe. I knew the road. I knew the, where the where the counties were and everything. Um, I that's my favorite place because there is no traffic. So uh, the road dead ends. So I know that there's not too much going on. But uh, just had to test it out one more time. And of course, uh, in my younger days, I might have went faster than that. I did ride motorcycles and I did have fun. Uh, but I'm not gonna make you guys wait. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna show you what I did. And uh, in case you don't know what I did to Lou, I will post the video later of the whole process. Uh, but, you know, I hear people talking about it. I decided, what the heck? You know, I might as well just give it a shot. So if anybody knows what this is, let me know. What is this thing? Okay. Know what it is? Yeah, post on there if you know what this is. I took it. I took the saws out of the loo and I went and cut that out. I don't see anybody answering up too much what it is. It is not a muffler, Stephen Aston. It is, it is part of the exhaust system. It's not the cat. I wouldn't cut the cat out. My gosh, that's where the oxygen sensors are all mounted. <laughs> Just to let you know that uh, there are two mufflers. Uh, yes, yes, Jess Day, you are correct. I cut the resonator out of Lou and I put a straight piper in there and uh, yeah, definitely cackles more. Uh, just wanted to experiment. If I don't like it, I buy a new one and have it reinstalled. But I'm going to drive it around that way so I can satisfy my curiosity. And it only cost me 28 bucks to do it. So, you know, that's pretty much what I did. And the video will show it and I'll have the before and after sounds. And thankfully, I do have two 2011 Ford Edges so I could run Blueberry right next to her. And I could do the old gas pedal thing and you guys can see for yourself and hear what the difference made. I'll have a long haul tomorrow. Uh, morning to give her a good test run and see how it affects noise in the cabin and and everything else and and go from there to add to my video as far as how it's handling and what's going on I do not have any check engine lights the O2 sensors appear to be operating fine uh, nothing that's popping up lights so far so the long run will tell me but if there is something wrong I would have saw it on my drive home and there would have been some sort of check engine light uh, but you know, that being said, that's what I did, folks. I took the resonator out of Lou and installed a straight pipe. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of pluses and minuses, I guess we could go with that. But I will say that uh, she is louder. <laughs> Definitely louder. Uh, so we're, we're, we'll stick with that. Oh, boy, what do we got going on? The group has been active. You folks know something. In March of uh, 2015 I think it was uh, let's see 16 17 no it's 2016 uh, st we started the group Mac T Ford Edge and then I asked Mano to join with me and he graciously said yes so we've been working on this and we got Elhard and in in uh, 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 Saddam that are also helpful in that too but uh, we started the group and we started out about less than 100 uh, activities on the Facebook group uh, for a while. And now we are averaging 500 activities a day, folks. Yes, 500 activities on the Facebook group a day. So that ought to tell you something. We've grown exponentially and we're nearly at 1,500 members and growing weekly by at least 20 to 30 a week and uh, sometimes 50 so it just depends pass the word you see people let them know I think this is one of the few Facebook groups that you can go and get Ford Edge repair uh, information and uh, get an answer within minutes literally so uh, it's a very active group and it does help all the edge owners uh, I did do some polls 
and you folks saw the polls out there and I did them also on another Facebook group and uh, one thing I want to say that I was surprised at the sheer number of owners that buy the Edge brand new that are on the groups okay we're talking you know for my you know group here uh, to the other group we're talking uh, you know 175 or so uh, was was new owner purchases it was amazing there are a lot of folks and you folks out there that buy the edge brand new and then the total number of used purchases didn't even match up to the new purchases so if there's like 75 new purchases there there was maybe 70 used purchases of various model years going down the line so the total was uh, really quite interesting uh, in that aspect but uh, then we covered uh, what was the most expensive part on your edge and everybody said gas <laughs> that's really not a part folks <laughs> I know the gas I you know you tell them you preach to the choir if you say gas look at me I buy anywhere from five six seven hundred sometimes eight hundred dollars a gas a month holy cow uh, you know, gas is not a part that you replace or anything like that. Uh, but there is a lot of answers on that. And, and I just wanted to say that, you know, for the most part, as far as replacing parts, I, gosh, I lost the poll questions already. Uh, but let me see if I can't find a parts. I'll be talking about parts in a bit, but I was just curious in the poll questions, what were the most one, most expensive problem that people have fixed? Okay, uh, TSSOSS sensors. That is the number one part, folks. And that is primarily the first gen, first few model years. Uh, so those are running their course. Eventually, they'll, they'll all get replaced. And so far, the, uh, the TSSOSS sens sensor issue has not really popped up in the later part of the generation or the 1.5. So I think we're doing pretty good on that. Uh, people complain about the tires. Hey, if you're going to run 20 and 22s, folks, you're living in Hollywood. Those things are going to be expensive. But again, it's like gas. It's a consumable. It's not necessarily a part, but it is an expense. I will agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Do I say this? Uh, six of you said your wife. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say I love my wife. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. Uh, <laughs> Car payments, yes. Okay, PTU. Now, the PTU didn't pop up very much. Okay, we hear a lot of complaints about it, but I think as a rule, uh, you know, it just, I'm surprised. I expected more. But apparently, per capita, uh, PTU is not a big thing as far as, it, and it's unscientific. We got sunroof, electrical devices, and then it goes all the way down the line to standard stuff. And I was surprised. I put down a charging system alternator. And apparently I'm the only one had an alternator go out. So, you know, maybe I just had pure bad luck. But uh, the rest, nobody else did. So a lot of, you know, unscientific poll, but yet a poll that tells us where we're standing on that and what's going on. Now, the next question I had was on this poll, when did you change your coolant in your 3537? Okay, coolant, first change by Ford, and I was corrected on that, and thank you for the correction, uh, was 100,000 miles. And I quite frankly think I was thinking transmission at 150. But, uh, you know, 100,000 miles is when Ford says to change the coolant. Now, I got a question on that, because then if you go to the 150,000 mile mark, they say change the coolant again. Now, my question to Ford is, what makes this same fluid magical for 100,000 miles, but yet only good after that for 50,000 miles. It makes you think, don't it? How can they say the same coolant is good for 100,000 miles, but when you change it with the same fluid and coolant, it's only good for 50,000 miles after 100,000 miles. Now that tells me that uh, something's wrong here, okay? I'm going to send smoke signals up on that one because why are they saying it's only good for 50,000 after the first 100,000? And why is it good for 100,000? That's a question I have. Uh, I personally change mine every 30,000 miles because I feel that changing the water pump is more expensive than replacing the coolant. So I replace the coolant 
in hopes that I can go longer without replacing the water pump. So uh, that's what I did. But uh, apparently, uh, you know, six of you said you go to 100,000. Uh, 60,000 was the next top line with 70,000 uh, miles for changing the coolant. And after that, uh, we got very few numbers. They're right down to, uh, what was it? What is coolant? <laughs> so, and are we supposed to change it? Uh, you know, so, you know, yeah, we want to change the coolant. We want to keep it going. But those are the poll questions that were put up there. And I think you guys can all reference the Facebook group and see the poll questions on there to give you an insight. After all, we are maintenance oriented folks, so we wanna make sure that we keep the coolant going, right? We wanna keep that coolant really fresh and going there. Now, as far as anything else that was going on, we have a lot of other things that folks are posting up there. Got some, uh, let's see, Chris, he posted something about uh, uh, fender flares and everything else that he's wanting to get on his edge. And you know what? Maybe after the edge has been around for a while, we might see more. It's, it's right now. I don't know. It. I think the auto industry as a whole sees it as a CUV, as a family car that that isn't really turned into much. Uh, so you know, it's it's a hard fought battle to get performance parts for a vehicle that is viewed by the industry as a utility vehicle that that really is family orientated and you know as some folks used to say was old people driving and we proved that wrong so uh, maybe once they see that the younger folks are driving them and want to do more we can start getting more demand the only way you're going to get demand folks is if you contact the performance parts people as groups and start asking for and creating a demand okay just sitting back and doing nothing is not going to happen uh, but if we as groups get together and say, hey, let's email these guys, let's ask them, let's force the issue, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So maybe we can squeak loud enough, we can get some good add-ons on there. But anyway, we got that, and uh, man, and I talked about old school days, what do you do to make your engine run better? And these days, it seems like everybody's turning to electronic tech upgrades, programming, okay? Uh, used to be in the old days, exhaust headers, you know, you, you did physical part changes, you know, blowers, all this other stuff. You did all this, but they have engineered engines so far to the point that the only true way to get more power in some ways is to do the tech upgrade. Programming, yes, programming. Uh, you know, engine efficiencies and everything else have really been changed. And you can, but it's very pricey to do actual physical changes to your engine. Uh, to go ahead and then make it all work and then you still have to have programming and that's where it's coming down to so uh, <laughs> You know old school days. Yeah slapping headers on and making her rough rough. You know that, that ain't gonna do it. Uh, let's see What else do we have here? I was going through some stuff. We got a few folks shining their cars up, which is always good and then, of course, swapping out headlights and everything. One member is doing that. Got to pull that uh, front body clip off there, right? You got to pull that whole bumper cover off to do those headlights. And there was a video posted on how to do that. And I will be doing a front body clip removal video in the future once I get uh, my uh, edge uh, front grills painted, body color matching and then I'll do a video on that because I will replace the chrome with body color and then uh, of course give it a nice look and I will not be painting them folks I want them to look good so I will pay the professionals to paint them it's going to be about 250 bucks I think uh, to get them painted and sanded and all clear coated and all this other stuff but I'm, I, after doing my wheels I have discovered I am not a professional painter so you know what I'm not going to do the painting, so I'll get them painted and then install them. Let's see, what else? What else do we have? Front sway bar links. We talked about those, and of course, uh, they do break, and there's somebody posted a video up about how he wasn't tightening them up or anything like that. All I can tell you is if you buy the Moog problem solvers, you don't have to worry about loose uh, uh, sway bar links. Those things will cinch up in a heartbeat because they have the, the wrench hold on them so you can cinch them up. Whether you got the tires up or off the ground, you're going to be able to cinch them up good and tighten them up. So uh, unlike those Allen's 
things. I bought the cheap Chinese ones for 20 bucks and they broke about as fast as I put them on. So I will tell you that there is quality in the Moogs. They don't break. I've never broken a Moog yet. So once you put a Moog on, you're good. Uh, if you buy the good ones. Yeah, there are cheaper ones, but buy the good ones. They're going to cost you 50 bucks, but uh, they won't break. And they can come back off when you need to take them back off and put them back on. That's a good thing. Let's see, uh, Jan. Jan posted his toolbox, and then Stephen. Stephen, Aston, we are still waiting for that video walkthrough of all your tools that are snap-on orientated. Uh, no, no HF stuff, Stephen. Don't chimp out on us. You know, you know, no, no sliding in Harbor Freight in there. Got to be all snap-on. That toolbox better be shiny, clean, waxed, and no grease on the tools either, in all pristine condition. Uh, but we're waiting for that. We voted and we voted with our likes and you owe us, Stephen. Yes, you owe us. So I look forward to that video soon. Uh, maybe you can get it up here before I get done. I don't know. But anyway, we got a few other things that we're covering here. Uh, let's see. Uh, snow tires. I will be doing more on snow tires next time. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll make that a topic, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive versus front-wheel drive, snow tires, no snow tires. Uh, I've been over this a bit, but we still want to have the pros and cons on that to make sure that we do have uh, the right tires for the right job and the right drive system. And there are pluses and minuses. Let's see, we got Lisa Penderson Gregory is living in a ghost town and we hope she is the best out there in florida right now and let's see what else do we got uh new members let's see i'm just trying to find everything michael anthony changing out his thermostat he brought up a little bit of a issue when i changed mine i put mine back in the way ford had it installed and it was installed with the bleeder valve facing forward towards the radiator. Why they did that, I don't know. I put it back in the same way Ford installed it. Uh, right or wrong, that's what I did. I figured I wasn't having problems before with it that way, so what the heck. But I guess uh, school of thought is the bleeder valve should be at the top, which makes full logical sense, okay? Uh, but uh, just in case you mind, if you have it on the side like that, just don't put it at the bottom you know higher up I think it'll it'll be all right but as a rule common sense says air is going to go up right so put that bleeder valve on that thermostat in the upright position at the top of the tube and you shouldn't have any problems let's see what else we got oh excuse me I had a good lunch anyway uh Ernie Ernie you're taking and working on getting some uh door actuators there uh can't help you on that i've never replaced a door actuator but i know it's i hate working on doors <laughs> i've said that before uh but uh it's there's a lot of little bitsy screws and torques and everything else i hate that stuff i'd rather work with big old bolts so anyway good luck on that post some pictures when you get it done and let us know how it's working if you do do the diy yourself because we're always interested in that and let's see Best place to get in replacement parts for the interior. Uh, Linda, you're going to have to go to your Ford parts dealer for the most part. A lot of these things are OEM, and I don't know that there's aftermarket available for them. Uh, post your question into the Facebook group like you just did as a separate post, and you will get a ton of responses. I know Jeff Leeper is a very good source for sourcing parts along with some other folks. Mano's pretty good at it too. So uh, post a separate post in here other than my Facebook live video and you should be able to get some answers. But just keep in mind uh, that, uh, yeah, they're, they're OEM parts. You know, nobody else is making them. So you will probably have to do that to go and get that information. Ken says you pull it. Well, if you got a you pull it near you, uh, the you pull it near me went, went belly up. You know, so there's no, no, you pull it around me. Uh, and so they're pretty much done. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Ryan Handstock. I think I pronounced that right. 
Yes, sir. I did post something, and if you guys watch the video on the uh, sunroof on your computer, you can see the warning. Hey, don't slide the feet all the way to the back of the rail. They'll pop off and fall down into the rail, and then you're going to be in, in, in deep kimchi, as they say. Uh, so you want to make sure that you do not slide them all the way back to the end of the roof rail, folks. Warning, do not slide the feet for the rail all the way back. Those little plastic things he has, you know, posted in there. If you slide them back there, you fall down. He got lucky. He is able to retrieve them. Other people have not been able to. So warning, warning, warning. Do not slide them all the way back, okay? You don't need to go all the way back because it doesn't go all the way back. So keep that in mind and uh, reiterate that on there. But thanks for the uh, reiteration on that, Ryan. Everybody needs to be aware of it. And, and uh, of course, it is still a problem that even though the word tries to get out. You will not see a lot of my notes on my videos if I use a YouTube video to do it because you have to watch it on a computer. So keep that in mind, folks. I, I try, but YouTube... To, you know, when I have to do notes for warnings for things that were uh, wrong, and yes, I am human. I do make mistakes. So, you know, that, that, is, that is life. But I try to correct my mistakes as I run across them. It put warnings, but they will not flash up on your TV, nor will they flash up on your mobile devices, okay? But if you're worried about it, watch it on your computer, and you'll be able to see it and then see the warnings pop up and, and get more information that way. Uh, I watch them on my TV all the time, so you know it, it's I know they're not popping up, but there's nothing I can do about it because I can't resubmit the video. Uh, it creates all sorts of hassles. It's a one-shot deal. You either got it right or you don't. When you load it, that's what you get, and you're stuck with it. So uh, that's just how it is. Uh, I can delete it, but then it causes all sorts of problems. Ad revenue, it's like I'm starting all over again. And it seems that the ad revenue does build up better as the video has more likes and, and more minutes. And uh, I will tell you also, since I be, have been bringing up the, the videos here, that uh, I am getting ready to cross a threshold and another milestone for the YouTube channel. I know we just crossed 4 million minutes of view time but I am getting ready. Maybe this week I will make the announcement next week that I have crossed uh, with the YouTube channel over 1 million views. Yes, 1 million views. Uh, that, that there is something I never even thought would happen. And I'm nearing uh, uh, over 3,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, help me out. You know, subscribe. Watch the videos. And that's the best way you can pay me back is by watching the videos. Uh, I know some of you watch them three or four times, right, Ashton? You just sit there and have me on a loop. <laughs> I love bothering him. Uh, but anyway, uh, air filters. Uh, you got dirty air filters. You got clean air filters. You all saw my video on air filters. Yes, 98,000 miles on one air filter. Your results will vary. But I got 98,000 miles out of mine, so I was happy with that. And then we got some great photography going on. We got a young man or by the name of David. He's probably not young. But anyway, David has been posting files, and I do want to thank David for doing that. And I want you all to know about it. If you do have repair files and things you've created, you can and have the ability to upload those repair files to the file section. There's nothing stopping you, folks. It is not controlled. It's not locked. You can do it. So if you got something you did, a project, you want to put a, create a document, put some text with it, some photographs, you can do that to help others and document that repair and make it easier for others to do. So don't think that uh, it's a one-shot deal and only admins can do it. Any one of you can because, after all, this is a group think, right? We all do and help each other and that's really what we want to do let's see uh, what was it uh, had the steering wheel Hubert Mark had a steering wheel problem apparently it drives this way one time and then it drives this way the other uh, that apparently is not fun when you're going down the road and it does that so uh, that's a 2016 issue 
they're replacing the steering wheel and they're reprogramming apparently they're getting it figured out uh, at first Ford was perplexed uh, and then of course then they I think they're starting to figure it out and I think they're getting it fixed and getting the TSBs out there now whereas before they weren't TSBs they're one of the other acronyms uh, where they sort of worked on it and tried to figure out what the problem was. And then uh, now they got TSBs going out. They're starting to figure out how to do it and correct it. So hopefully this fix lasts. Yes. So, you know, you don't have your steering wheel turning on you. And then, of course, we can get rid of that uh, issue. And then we're all good, right? But uh, I'm sure there'll be more in the future. It's a big deal on a lot of the other uh, pages, the steering wheel turning. So... Uh, they will get it fixed, okay? It's not the end of the world. They'll get it fixed. Uh, new technology, new things going on. And yes, I know they've been using it for a while, which also perplexes me. Why do they have this problem when they knew they had the problem before? Why ain't they fixing it? So anyway, uh, and also I will add that this is another fine product from Takata. Yeah, you guys hear about airbags? Well... The same people who made the airbags made the steering. Yeah. Yeah. What do we do there, right? What do we do? So, anyway, yes, it is what it is, and life is full of jelly beans and peach pits. So, you just got to watch what you're doing. <clears throat> anyway, yes, I did do an inspection on my rear end of my uh, loo and looked underneath there, and I looked at the shocks, and I will tell you, I went through those shocks. And I was talking to man on private messages. I was upset. I was like, man, I bought these KYB shocks. They only got 50, 60,000 miles on them. They're already leaking. You know, I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to give up on KYB. And then I went back and looked at my uh, YouTube channel when I changed the shocks. And <laughs> I jumped the gun a bit. Okay, these shocks that are leaking have 100,000 miles on them, folks. They were not failing because they were, you know, only had 50, 60,000. They're failing because they got 100,000 miles on them. My, how time flies when you're having fun, right? Anyway, I did not realize I had 100,000 miles since I last did the shocks. I just hadn't paid attention to it. So, uh, anyway, I ordered some new KYBs on Rock Auto for 75 bucks and uh, got them coming. And no, Steven, I don't think they got a lifetime warranty. But then again, I looked at the Motorcraft. And they got a two-year unlimited warranty. That's what our Rock Auto says. So, uh, do I pay more? Rock Auto, they're three bucks cheaper. Uh, yeah, plus or minus. I like the KYB, so I stuck with them. But uh, Motocraft, I'd probably put Motocraft on my wife's edge just because she likes the way it rides. So, you know, it'll be Motocraft for her, KYB for me. That's the way I roll. So, and, or bounce, right? <laughs> PTU recalls, David. Uh, if they're if they haven't done a PTU recall by now, I don't think they ever will. Uh, face it, we're in seventeen. They started building this car in two thousand seven. We we now have over you know ten years of production, and they haven't come back on it yet. Now, will it? Uh, you know, it it comes down. You got to get to grips with a with the National Traffic Highway Safety Administrator to say it's unsafe. It is not unsafe. It is a parts failure, but they can't attribute it to being unsafe. Uh, so that takes away a little wind out of the sails. Uh, can it be a class action that goes after it? That is probably your biggest chance there to get something to fix it is through class action rather than a safety recall. Uh, depends on many people band together, have their you know ducks in a row, and everything else. So uh, PTU recalls, and I will tell you this: if Ford sees a PTU recall coming up because of a class action, it is nothing saying that Ford won't say, "Well, gee, why don't we do a CSP?" Now you guys know what the CSP, Customer Service Program, and that's where the, if it fails. They fix it for free. They may extend the warranties on them well past what they're currently doing to alleviate any class action that way. So they could head it off at the pass by extending warranties, maybe going back and paying for some past replacements and stuff like that. 
would be cheaper than letting a class action get through where they got to replace everything. So, you know, it's all up to the bean counters and the warranty people and Ford and the lawyers of what they want to do. So, uh, I don't know. I don't see it, see that happening, but, you know, they never know. Uh, Ford's making it better. They're starting to realize that drain plugs and all this other stuff are a good thing and that, this, that silently they are agreeing that service needs to be done. Okay, they haven't come out and stated it publicly, but they're agreeing through action that that service needs to be done. Otherwise, they wouldn't be installing drain plugs and doing all this other stuff. So uh, their actions are speaking louder than their words in this case. Uh, but if I did own a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive Ford Edge, I'd be changing that PT about every ten thousand miles if it was up to me. Uh, that w that's what I would do because I just drive the wheels off of them. I wouldn't want to take a chance. But let's see what else we got. We got Emily. She's uh, currently disassembling the interior of her uh, Ford Edge. Way to go, girl. Yes, Emily is hands down along with uh, Claude uh, and and a few others. You know, they're they're just diving in there hard working on them. And I am proud to see that happening. So uh, you keep going, ask the questions, Emily, and applaud you too, and uh, keep moving forward with that. I am entirely impressed and happy to see that you girls are working on that. Uh, probably not girls, but, you know, we'll just assume. How's that? Anyway, uh, let's see. Water pumps. We got a lot of people working on water pumps here lately. A couple more trying to DIY it. There's a lot to it, so the, not necessarily for the faint of heart but keep going on it. Well, I think we got a lot of different things, pictures and everything else going on. Answered a few questions, new members, and I will say that if, okay, Victor, I'm gonna cover this. I know it's not Ford Edge related, but my heart goes out to the Ford Ranger, and if that Ford Ranger Raptor is a reality, I, oh folks, there might be a back T Ford Ranger Raptor YouTube channel. I don't know. If one comes out, yes, yes, that I would have to break the piggy bank to do it. But I'd, I'd, I'd even risk my my uh, my relationship with my wife over that. <laughs> she would probably shoot me if I bought one. But I'd be willing to risk it. Uh, you know, a year's worth of sleep in the doghouse would be worth it. So uh, anyway, yes, don't tempt me. Uh, other than that, we got a lot of other stuff going on, and I do want to cover the thing that I wanted to cover before we get too late, and that is MACT. Yes, we're going to talk about the uh, Ford Edge and Lincoln MKX U.S. group meeting. Yes, that will be held at uh, Rochelle, Illinois, this coming Saturday. The 16th of September. You all know Saturday, 16th of September at 2.30 p.m. at the uh, Alfonso's uh, Pizza Place there in town. And the address is 1115 Turkington Terrace, Rochelle, Illinois. Be there in the parking lot across from the uh, restaurant because the parking lot there is small. But they do have contracted parking across the street from them. And we will all gather out there. We have at least three that are saying they're definitely going. And we have three maybes. Uh, you all are invited. Let's make this first uh, annual meeting uh, go well. Everybody show up. We can have some nice pizza and talk about our edges, open the hoods, see who's got the cleanest one, see who's got the dirtiest one, which is me. And, and uh, of course... Uh, Highest mileage, B. <laughs> but who's got the you know nice edge and everything? Talk about what we're doing to make them better and everything else. So uh, that is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. And hopefully we can make it a yearly thing or whatever we end up doing. But I think this will be the first meeting of a, of a group like this for the Ford Edge uh, to really start putting the members together, see the faces, and uh, you know form bonds, friendships, and, of course, camaraderie in the Ford Edge and Lincoln MKX. So if you got an MKX, I think we got an MKX showing up. 
uh, and uh, of course we'll all compare what that is you know maybe we'll take that Lincoln MKX out for a for a show ride but anyway be there sign up check the events tab click on it that you're going it's always nice to who shows up and you never know I might bring a little something something with me for all of you that show up so you know we'll see what we got but anyway uh, show up and we'll have a good time now we also have a few other things that we need to go over and I promised you all oh, common replacement parts reference yes we are going to talk about what the common replacement parts are on the first gen all the way up through the 2014 and maybe even dip in a little further than that but right now I think we're just talking about the one first gen and 1.5 most common replacement parts are the spark plug kit yes spark plugs the coils the coils will fit so we have this document in the file section and you can buy this kit all you have to do is go to the file section look this document up and you get the part numbers and everything so uh, the number one thing is the spark plug kit with the coils and those coils do fit the 2011 plus through 14 edge so look that up PCV valve yes uh, there are different PCV valves for the uh, Ford edge there's three of them all together so you do want to make sure that you get the right one for your edge the 2007 had a heated one it's the oddball out of the group but the others are non heated and you just need to replace them and their specialty tubes and everything else and I got a video on how to replace that tube with the uh, PCV valve so you can reuse the tube so go ahead and do that next part is like we said in the poll the TSS OSS sensors and of course there is a uh, B sensor assembly which is your speed sensor and a B sensor assembly which is your engine speed OSS sensor those parts are linked in there and they do have uh, clickable links to go to the part to take and find more information on them and then you got the trans uh, cover electrical connector gasket included in there you know if you're going to be going in you might as well re you know replace the gasket while you're there a lot of times you want to make sure you do a good job so that means you replace the other stuff that you're working on because why go in twice let's do it right the first time so we got the gaskets and this document has the uh, replacement parts listed so you can uh, of course have more information this document was created by Mano he put work into it so that you don't have to so thank him for putting this together for everybody and then of course go there PTU PTO as they say it power transfer power takeoff unit uh, 3537 on the 6F50 transmission the latest revision is G on that one okay as as of 2017 and then uh, we got the 6F55 transmission and then you got the hot weather group and the without hot weather group so you gotta make sure you get the right one one is A and one is B so when you go to that for the 6F55 make sure you get the right PTU for that you know use so hot weather where would we find the hot weather uh, Middle East places like that okay that's where you're gonna find the hot weather now that comes with a plug and a few other things so you can find out you know can I order this and make it work on my end so I get the plug pre-built in and then of course you can go through that but you gotta make sure everything works out right backup cameras yes backup cameras those are pricey little buggers they are uh, but uh, that seems to be a 2011-14 issue and they do go bad and once they start showing no lines and going upside down you are toast so you want to make sure that you do order the one specifically there uh, there are two versions one is A and one is B uh, the A will calibrate the B will not so make sure you order the right one because the B is actually I think made for an F-150 and people are using it but it won't calibrate for the lines so uh, a few things there for you but read the documents and it's clearly outlined in there engine cooling fans yes what will we do without a fan and of course we have the without trailer towing and we have the with trailer towing so make sure you have the right edge now just because you got a trailer it does not mean you have the trailer towing package okay somebody could have put that trailer hitch on their aftermarket 
and then therefore you would still be without trailer tow is what you'd want to put on there there have been some discussions as to whether or not uh, we can modify and adjust the uh, trailer tow uh, radiator to work and provide extra cooling in replacement of the without so uh, nobody's done it yet I haven't done it so I couldn't answer that but you know hey it's worth a shot if you feel feel ambitious right uh, oh my gosh door latch I know you folks are screaming for a door latch recall something fierce uh, as I said I've made it made a video on it told you where you could go to complain uh, it seems like every vehicle around the Ford Edge except the Ford Edge is getting a recall on the uh, rear doors but we got the lock actuators all listed here and the door latches and uh, all, of course all the parts are listed there so door latch is definitely on that list for most replaced parts throttle body yes we got a lot of issues with throttle body so again the throttle body is also a 3537 issue and of course that causes problems too so this throttle body of course is noted in there and they've done a, quite a few upgrades on the throttle body and you can buy them online pretty cheap if you hunt around but I would recommend OEM Motorcraft rather than some aftermarket thing uh, you know why why go that route but I would definitely buy a Motorcraft one but find the best price you can for it and literally folks if you can't change that thing out in 10 minutes you're, you're lollygagging you know it's a very simple trade out and, and it's not that expensive so if you got problems with drivability that may be an issue and if you have doubts ask the Facebook group they'll tell you let's see belts and tensioners everybody's got to have a power steering belt which is that stretchy belt which requires zip ties and a little bit of brute force to get it on there but you can we got the belts and parts listed here for the serpentine belt and of course uh, the tensioner uh, I've never had a tensioner go bad folks I replaced one once just because it had nearly like 250,000 miles on it but it was still working yes so longevity wise you know and they're a pain in the behind yes I had never been so frustrated in all my life trying to get a tensioner out and trying to get those little things in there and just moving that wrench that far you know you just ee, ee, ee. It was, you know, it was like a monkey with a q-tip anyway <laughs> <laughs> some of you may know that joke but anyway uh, <laughs> yeah anyway that's that's that uh, let's see the ghost power steering filter it's only a 2011 Ford Edge deal here's the deal if you don't want to buy the power steering filter uh, I guess you could put an inline thing there to just bypass it you know but you have two connections to make sure it's tight and some people may do that just call it a day but uh, if you buy the power steering filter filter it's not that expensive just be careful where you buy it from there's no way it's a hundred dollars folks you know 20 bucks you know it's not that expensive uh, just shop around for it go to the actual filter manufacturer of it and they got it pretty cheap I think it's 25 bucks or something so you can get that but it is off of a f-150 uh, you know system so if in doubt go to the f-150 and you know check theirs out and it's the same thing but uh, the Ford parts are there and Motocraft parts are also there for the part numbers for that ghost filter. Again, this is only the 2011 model year. Yes, it was a special model year and it was the only one to get the power steering filter. It has a big magnet in it and all that good stuff. So why not replace it? I've replaced mine and it's been 100,000 miles on it so far and it's doing good. So uh, I haven't really replaced it. But those are probably the most common replacement parts to date. I'm sure there's more that's coming up and Mano and I have discussed uh, TSS issues and OSS sensor issues and we have found out that we're starting to see more valve body and solenoid issues with the 6F50 transmission. Uh, it seems like there's something going on there uh, and we're starting to see more valve body replacements and more solenoid uh, pack replacements. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the TSS was the primary fault, but it looks like the valve body is coming up with a secondary issue along with the solenoids. Uh, as they age, get old fluid in them and everything else, things start happening. So uh, a lot of times you're going to start seeing us reference you know, the valve body. They make zip kits, overhaul kits for them, plunger replacement, everything that goes with it. 
but you still have to pay attention on the shifts. And one of the preeminent things is a valve that does not shift right. It causes your uh, three to four shift to be wrong, and that is within the valve body. Uh, and then that means you got to replace the valve body, maybe even a solen solenoid. Uh, and the problem is, is it the solenoid or is it the valve? You know, nobody's replaced one to determine if it was the other. Uh, so most everybody has done it, has replaced both parts, and then it fixes it. So, you know, nobody's went through, because face it, do you want to tear into it twice? Or do you just buy the parts and throw a, the, the parts bucket at it? Uh, and then it fixes it. So we've been getting good results and seeing folks having results. The solenoids and the valve body both replaced. Boom. She's shifting good, running good, and everybody's happy with the new TSS OSS sensors. And that is all there is to it. So, uh, you know, that is it, folks. That is what I wanted to cover on that. I do, of course, want to again stress that I do wish everybody that's down there in Florida and and even into Georgia and whoever else is affected in the Caribbean that are our members, Puerto Rico, seem to uh, do pretty good on it. It uh, doesn't sound like, you know, there's damages everywhere, but uh, we do want to wish everybody safe, safe passage through this. And, of course, our prayers and thoughts are all with you and that in what you're doing. But uh, by all means, join up on the uh, Facebook group here, folks. I know you all like this thing. And I know you appreciate everything that everybody does to help. And I am proud that every one of you pop up with the answers when the questions come up. So keep up the good work on that. It is a great community. And join up on this Facebook group. And, of course, YouTube. Join up on YouTube. And make sure you like and subscribe, folks. I want to see some good subscriptions coming in here. Help me grow this channel. And, of course, uh, go there. Now, keep in mind, if you do post anything on YouTube, I don't get notifications on it. For whatever reason, YouTube is not sending me notifications on anybody posting. So if you do subscribe to YouTube, by all means do so, but join the Facebook group. That's where you're going to get the responses for your written text and answers that you want immediately. So YouTube, subscribe, and if you feel generous, post, punch that little blue button that says PayPal. You can buy stickers for five bucks and I'll send them to you anywhere, U.S. and Canada. And that is that. And then, of course, uh, let's see, you can also donate if you want. Uh, but my fee hit the floor today, and, of course, I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day, too. With that being said, I got some spare footage I'll toss on here after the fact, along with some great music from the Band of One and, he, and his great music that goes with that at the end. Have a great day. Now I'm going to do the uncomfortable thing of pushing the finish button. Bye, all. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.